Very good morning, dear students. Welcome back uh, once again. Today I'll be taking the classes for class 10, and the subject is geography. And uh, I do hope my students are revising the lesson at home. I have already covered uh, the chapter climate, uh, then soil resources. Then prior to that, I have even completed the topographical maps in the class. And I do hope you are practicing your topographical maps, which is very important. Uh, please make sure you do your map of India as well. I have told you the maps which you have to do. You will have to make the outline map of India and then practice the mountains, plateaus and plains. And followed by that, you will have to do the other sections which are uh, given in the textbook. But please make sure that you keep the maps separately, separate for each section. A uh, separate map for mountains, plateaus and plains, a separate map for uh, then rivers and then the deserts and so on. So please do that. And uh, I've finished the chapter on soil resources and today, dear students, I'm going to do the chapter on natural vegetation. So uh, what is natural vegetation? Natural vegetation means basically the growth of plants without human aid. Once again, I repeat, natural vegetation means the growth of plants without human aid. That means they grow by themselves. Now the veg natural vegetation of our country is different in different places. Due to the difference in the uh, relief features, due to the difference in the climate conditions, due to the uh, difference in like if you see the rainfall, the temperature, what happens is the natural vegetation of our country varies from place to place. Now if you go below the Tropic of Cancer, which divides the country in two parts, if you go below that, we have tropical, uh, yes, influence, we have the tropical influence, where we have the vegetation of the tropical uh, the type. Then if you go above the Tropic of Cancer, if you go to the northern parts, we have the temperate type of vegetation. Temperate type of vegetation, because it's slightly colder if you go above the Tropic of Cancer. And if you go below the Tropic of uh, Cancer, it gets a little warmer. So we have a, a tropical uh, type of vegetation. So uh, let's see the importance of forests. Why are forests very important? Now we know that there are various reasons why the forests are so very important. Uh, firstly, if you see, uh, it helps in uh, protecting the soil from being eroded. See, it prevents the soil from being eroded, prevents soil erosion. Soil erosion is prevented. Then number two, it also helps to add moisture in the air through the process called as transpiration. Why the forest is very important, see? It prevents soil from being eroded because when the trees uh, grow, the roots go into the soil and as the roots go deep into the soil, it holds the soil. It absorbs the water into the soil. It absorbs the water into the soil at the same, at the same time it holds the soil whereby preventing it from being eroded. That is why the trees are so very important. Besides that, the trees are very important because it helps in the process called as transpiration. It adds moisture to the atmosphere. See? The trees are very, very important. Why? Why are the trees very important? It gives us various products. Products. Woods are provided by the forests. We have different uh, types of products we get, uh, fruits we get, see? dyes. All these products are there which are derived from the forest. So uh, it is also used for making houses as well. We even use it for making houses. See? Then what happens? It helps in checking floods. It helps to check floods as well. See, it retains the soil, it prevents the soil being from being eroded, it makes the soil very fertile also. Why? By continuously adding humus. It makes the soil fertile. See, these are the different uh, ways in which the forests are very, very important. There are so many ways. See, see the, the forests are very important because it helps in uh, soil, it prevents soil erosion. It helps in the process called as transpiration. See, it provide, pro provides us various products, products. It also checks floods. It also helps the soil to be, get fertile, to be fertile by adding 
humus continuously, the leaves that fall down from the trees, when they dry, they ultimately decay and turn into humus, which adds to the fertility of the soil. It provides continuous what? Air. Oxygen is continuously provided. See? So the forests are so very important to all of us. See? Then it also provides employment. See? Forest provides us employment. Various people, so many people are dependent on the forest directly or indirectly. It provides employment to the people as well. Now, we know that uh, if you see in our country, we have different types of natural vegetation cover. So the first one which we are going to do is the evergreen forest. Evergreen forest. Evergreen forest, okay, is the first one that I am going to do. Now this is found in the areas where the rainfall is, rainfall is from 200 to 300 centimeters. It is found in the areas where the rainfall ranges between 200 to 300 centimeters. If you see the temperature, the temperature varies from 25 degrees centigrade to 27 degrees centigrade with a humidity of about 77 percent. See, the temperature that is prevalent over the evergreen forest is around 25 degrees centigrade to 27 degrees centigrade and the humidity is around 77 percent. Now, the forest is covered with dense growth. If you see the characteristics also, we will see. The forest is, is very dense. It has huge trees, very dense cover, a lot of creepers, climbers, epiphytes that are found in this forest because it's very, very dense. And what happens is we have numerous trees that are found in there. Different species of trees are found in this forest. Not one single tree, not one single, single species, but different species of forest or trees are found in this forest. Okay, so now let's see the characteristics. The characteristics, okay, same thing. Let's see the characteristics. Characteristics. What is the first characteristics of the tropical evergreen forest? See, the forest do not shed the leaves at the same time. See, it's evergreen. The forests are, the trees are evergreen. That means the forest does not look bare. The trees do shed the leaves, but their leaves are not shed at the same time. And because of which the forest looks evergreen. That is the first characteristics. They do not shed the leaves at the same time, so they always look green. Number two is, the forest contains numerous species. Numerous species are found in this forest. Not one single species, but numerous species are found in this forest. Number three, we have dense undergrowth and the trees are hardwood. And the trees are, are hard wood. Okay, this is the third characteristics of the evergreen forest. The evergreen forests are dense. The undergrowth underneath the uh, trees on the ground also it's very dense. Dense undergrowth with trees are very very hard. Then we have next one. They are found in areas of heavy rainfall. found in areas of heavy rainfall. Yes, the evergreen forests are found in the areas where the temperature is very high, where the rainfall is very high and where the humidity is also very high. So these three things are there which makes the evergreen forest possible. High temperature, high rainfall and high humidity is one of the characteristics which are very important for the evergreen forest uh, to be pre uh, present. That means if you see the characteristics, the evergreen forests are ever, that means the trees are evergreen because the trees do not shed the leaves at the same time at a particular season. Number two, there are numerous species, different species are there, dense undergrowth and the trees are hardwood. And then number four, found in areas where the rainfall is very, very high. 
Now, though we have a lot of trees, a lot of trees found in this evergreen forest, huge trees, very big trees, hardwood trees, but then what happens? The evergreen forests are not economically exploited. The evergreen forests are not economically exploited. Now, what could be the reason why it is not economically exploited? Why the trees are not being cut down and sold? Why is it so? It is because of various reasons like firstly, what happens is in the evergreen forest, we do not have one particular species of trees present there. Different species of trees are found. Different types of trees are found. It's a mixed vegetation there. Mixed type of trees are found. Different types of trees are found. So therefore, cutting the trees down for commercial purpose also becomes slightly uh, complicated because different species of trees are found there. If only one particular species of trees was found, then it would be very easy because at that all the trees would be required for a specific purpose. But in the evergreen forest, what happens is different species of trees are found because of which what happens is to cut these trees for commercial basis becomes very, very expensive and also complicated. Number two is that because the trees are very dense, the growths are very dense, the forests are very thick, what happens? Transportation becomes one problem as well. See? Transportation is also another uh, problem. Because the trees are, are very dense, it has dense undergrowth, because of which what happens? Transportation becomes very difficult, whereby to take the trees, cut the trees and take it out of the forest becomes very difficult. That is why the evergreen forests are not economically exploited okay now where are these trees found where are the forests found the evergreen forests are found in the if you see the western part of western Ghats, then they are found in northeast regions like garu kankasi and jaintia hills then they are also found in the tarai region andava and nikoba nikoba regions andava and nikoba regions yeah islands and then what type of trees are found in the evergreen forest we have uh, trees. What are the trees that are found in the evergreen forest? We have trees like rosewood. Number one, we have rosewood. Then we have ebony. Then we have sisam. See, these are the type of trees that we have. Then we have gurjan. Gurjan. See, you can see the rosewoods are basically used for why? For they are used for furnitures. See, sisam is also used for furnitures. Then, if you see gurjan, it's used for railway sleepers. Then they use for construction of houses because most of the trees which are found there are hardwood trees. So they use for railway sleepers. They use for furnitures. They use for constructing houses and so on. So these are the type of trees that are found in the evergreen forest. And I just told you the region where it's found. So this is something about the evergreen forest. Okay, now we go to the next one, slightly to the second one, and that is the tropical deciduous type of forest. Tropical deciduous type of forest, the second one which we're going to do. And uh, they also call it as a monsoon forest. Tropical deciduous. Tropical deciduous type of forest or monsoon forest okay this is the next one now this is found in the areas where the rainfall is from 100 centimeters to 200 centimeters evergreen i told you it's from 200 to 300 centimeters deciduous forest or monsoon forests are found in the areas where the rainfall ranges from 100 to 200 centimeters okay now the trees are deciduous the trees are deciduous and what does this mean, deciduous? It means that the trees shed their leaves once a year. Between the month of March, April and May. March, April and May is the time when March and April. March and April, sorry. March and April is the time when these trees shed the leaves. So deciduous trees are those trees which shed the leaves once a year. But again, they do not shed it at a, at a time altogether at the same time. They do not shed all the leaves all together at the same time. They shed the leaves from the month of March to April. Okay, so deciduous trees uh, shed the leaves between this time. And the reason why they shed the leaves is because during this time, there is a scarcity of rainfall, there is scarcity of water. And in order to survive during the dry seasons, dry period, when there is very less rainfall, 
the trees shed the leaves. If there are more trees on the leaves, what happens is, what happens? There will be more transpiration taking place, more water will be absorbed by the plant, a tree to survive, more water is required because there are more leaves on the tree. So therefore, what happens is during the dry season, during the dry season when the rainfall is very less, at that time the deciduous trees shed their leaves. That is in order to survive during the harsh and dry conditions. The trees shed their leaves. Okay. Now, these deciduous trees are, you know, very, very, uh, they are economically very, very well exploited. These forests are economically or commercially very well exploited. The reason why the deciduous forests are commercially very well exploited is because here we have trees which are found in pure strands. We do not have trees which are of different varieties in this forest. Pure strands, if you see the regions rise, if you see the region wise region of this or this is this forest, what happens is we find basically pure, uh, pure strands being found, a specific type of species being found in certain regions. Because of which what happens is it becomes very easy for the people to cut the trees down and take it out and sell it. And moreover, what happens is the trees have a you know are not very closely packed in, in, in the deciduous forest. They are slightly away from each other. Compared to the evergreen forest where it's very dense and tightly packed. But in the tropical deciduous forest, the trees are slightly away from each other and moreover, they are found in pure strands. They are found in pure strands. And because of this, what happens is, it becomes very easy for the people to cut these trees and take it out. That means, transportation also becomes very easy. Then uh, choosing the tree also becomes very easy because the same type of species are found in the forest. So cutting it down also will not be very very complicated, very expensive. And then because the trees are quite uh, far apart from each other, not very closely packed, what happens is transporting them out also becomes very easy. Taking them out also become, becomes very easy. That is the reason why the tropical deciduous forests are the most commercially exploited forest. That is the uh, tropical deciduous forest. Okay, and then now uh, let's see what are the, some of the regions where these uh, deciduous forests are found. If you see where the deciduous forests are found, it is found in the regions like the peninsular region, it's found in the east of Western Ghats, it's found in the Ganga Plains, uh, then also the foot of the Himalayas. So these are the regions where the uh, tropical deciduous forests are found. The peninsular region, east of the Western Ghats, the Ganga Plain and the foot of the Himalayas. Now, what about trees are found here? We have trees like sal, teak, then we also have trees like sandalwood and sibyl. Sandalwood and sibyl. Okay, sandal. Sandalwood. Sandalwood and Sibyl. Now, what are the trees used for? What is a sal used for? It's basically used for railway slippers. Then we also have for shipbuilding, like teak is used for shipbuilding. Then we have for uh, house construction. Then, if you see sandalwood, it is used for carving and also handicrafts. So, besides uh, trees which are hard, like they use for uh, railway slippers, they use for uh, shipbuilding, then they also use for house construction, furnitures, and also like the sandalwood, if you see, it is used for uh, what say, handicrafts and carvings. So, these are the trees which are found there and uh, its uses as well. That is a little bit about the tropical deciduous forest, which is also called as, uh, which is also called as the monsoon forest, like I told you. Tropical deciduous forest or the monsoon forest. Now we go to the third one that is the yes, thorn and scrub forest. Thorn and scrub forest. Now where is this uh, region found or where it is found? It is found in the area where the rainfall is below 100 centimeters. Okay. It is found in the areas where the rainfall is uh, below 100 centimeters. 
and the trees are characterized by widely scattered thorny bushes. If you see whatever vegetation I found here, thorny bushes. See, trees like acacia I found there. Then thorny bushes, babul, kikar, khajuri. These are the type of trees that are found in this region. That means those trees which can survive in the harsh, dry conditions. Now if you see the trees that are found here, they will not go above 8 to 10 meters, 6 to 10 meters. So they do not grow more than 6 to 10 meters tall. They will not grow more than 6 to 10 meters tall. But what happens is, as the trees grow to a specific height, more important than that is that the roots go deep down into the ground. As it is, there is very less water in the atmosphere. Because in the desert region, there is very less rainfall. And the water in the atmosphere also is very less. So, in order to survive, what the trees do, what the plants do is that they have long and deep roots which go down, deep down to the grounds where they can absorb the moisture under the ground. And that is how they survive. Long and deep roots which go deep down into the ground whereby enabling the plants to get some amount of water for it to survive in the harsh, dry conditions. Another important characteristic of this type of vegetation is that they have thorns instead of leaves. Thorny leaves. Thorns instead of leaves. Now why do these plants which are found here have thorns? Why do they have thorny bushes? The reason is because, firstly, so that it can uh, reduce the amount of water that is being lost from the plant. It reduces the process called as transpiration. If you have a leaf, if there is a leaf, what happens is there will be more water being lost from this leaf. But if you have a thorn, see, less water will be lost. That is the reason why in the, uh, let's say, thorny regions or in the desert regions, we have plants which have thorns instead of leaves. So that the process of transpiration is minimized. Very less water is lost through the process called as transpiration. That's number one. And number two also is because what happens is these thorns which are there protect the plant from being eaten by the animals. As it is, there's scarcity of water. If you see the cactus, if you go to the desert and see the cactus, cacti, if you see, all of it has water in it. The stems are very fleshy. And the reason why it's very fleshy is because there's plenty of water in it. And plants which have plenty of water in it will definitely be a place where the animals will want to go and eat it. But then what happens? Because these plants, this cactus, cacti has thorns, they have thorns whereby it prevents the plant from being eaten by the animals. But if you see the plant, it has plenty of water, very fleshy stem. Why? There's plenty of water. But then, because of the presence of the thorns, what happens is the animals don't eat it. So these are the two reasons why we have thorny thorns in the plants of uh, plants found in the desert regions. Firstly, to minimize the process called as transpiration, and secondly, also to be uh, saved saved from being eaten by the animals. Okay. Now let's see uh, one of the uh, what to say trees that are found there. If you see if you see the vegetation, they are mostly consists of thorny bushes. I told you. Uh, then uh, acacia, babul, kikar, and Khajuri. Now, where are they found? They are found in Rajasthan. If you see the Rajasthan, Gujarat, Southwest Punjab, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, these are the areas where the thorn and scrub forests are found. Rajasthan, Gujarat, Southwest Punjab, Karnataka, and Andhra Pradesh. And then, Babul is one of the very important trees that are found there. It's a tanning uh, for hides and, and for skin. It's used for tanning hides and skin. Then we also have Khajuri, which is a very, very durable wood. It can be used for making furnitures and construction purpose as well. So, something about the thorn and scrub forest is what I've just done now. Then we move to the last, uh, second last aspect here. That is the mangrove. Mangrove or littoral forest. Forest. The third one, sorry, the fourth one is the mangrove or the littoral forest.
Okay, let's now see this one. Now, what does this mean? This means that Ban Group or literal basically means onshore. Onshore. That means this forest is mostly found in the uh, shore, coastal regions. It is found in the coastal regions and also in the amount of the rivers where it meets the tide. Where tides are experienced. In those areas, we have the mangrove or littoral forest. That means littoral means onshore, and these type of forests are found along the coastal areas and also along the mouth of the river where it uh, faces, where it experiences tides. Okay. Now it can be found both in the salt and fresh water. Now it is found continuously in the regions like if you see where it is found. It is found uh, in the regions like the deltas of Ganga, then the Brahmaputra, Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna and so on. And the trees that are found here are Sundari tree. Sundari tree. After which Sundarbans is named. See? The trees that are found in this uh, littoral forest or mangrove forest is basically Sundari tree. After which Sundarbans got its name in West Bengal. And this tree is used for making basically boats. Building boats, building houses. It's what this uh, tree is used for. Okay. It's a very strong and hard wood. And the other important trees are like Gorzen and Hintal. Then we have the next one that is mountain forest. Mountain forest. Now this mountain forest is found in the regions along the foot of the Himalayas or the Shivalik regions. There we have the tropical deciduous type of forest. If you go above the Shivaliks, like an example is Sal, tropical deciduous type of forest is at the foot of the Himalayas or at the Shivalik region. Okay, there we have trees like Sal. Then we have the other type of forest that is found in this uh, mountain forest region is that tropical, no sorry, temperate deciduous type of forest. Temperate deciduous type of forest is found a little bit above the Shivaliks. Above the Shivaliks like oak and chill, uh, chestnut, these are the examples of the mountain forest. So one we have is in the foot of the Himalayas, Himalayas, we have the tropical deciduous forest. Then if you go above the, uh, all this also called as Shivaliks, Shivalik. Now if you go above the Shivalik, above the Shivalik, we have temperate deciduous deciduous forest. Example of tropical deciduous forest is Sal, which is found at the foothills of the Himalayas or the Shivaliks, a little bit lower region. These come under the mountain forest because it is found in the mountainous region at the pit of foothills of the mountains. We have trees like Sal, which are the tropical deciduous forest. Now, if you go above the foot of the hills, if you climb up from the foot of the Himalayas or hills, mountains, foothills of the mountains, if you climb up or go above the Shivaliks, we have the temperate deciduous forest. And the trees that are found here, I told you, is oak, chestnut. And chill, some of the examples of the trees that are found in the temperate deciduous forest. Now, if you go still a bit, little bit higher up, if you go still a bit a little bit higher up, then we have what is the coniferous trees are found there. Coniferous trees. Coniferous trees. If you go a little bit higher up above the Shivaliks, then we come to the region where it's slightly colder, much colder where snow falls because of which we have coniferous trees like pine, fir, cedar and so on. Coniferous trees are found. They are cone shaped trees so that they can withstand the snowfall. So cone shaped trees are found in the higher regions that is the coniferous forest. Then if you go above the tree forest line, tree line, if you go above the tree line then we don't have any vegetation except we have grasses and uh, bushes. Grasses and flowering bushes only are found in the region above the tree line. High if you go, if you go high above the coniferous forest, then we come to the region where it's very cold and because of its uh, very cold temperature out there, we don't have trees that are found there, but rather we have only 
of over say we have some bushes flowering bushes and then grasses are found in this region okay some of the important trees if you see important trees are or where is it found where is this mountainous region found it extends from kashmir kashmir to assam is where the mountain forest is found the mountain forest extends from kashmir to assam right away from the western region to the eastern region the northern side the himalayan range is where we are talking about there we have the mountain forest it extends from kashmir to assam and i told you like we have different categories different types of trees that are found there mixed vegetation found there we have deciduous trees as well as coniferous trees found there if you go to the little bit foothills of the Hima mountain in himalayas if you go to the foothills of the himalayas or shivaliks we have tropical deciduous forest found there example is sa if you go a little bit above the shivaliks if you climb up from the foothills of the himalayas and go up we have the temperate deciduous forest found there example is chestnut or chir deciduous trees which shed the leaves once a year if you go still a bit higher up up the mountain we come to the colder region where we have coniferous trees being grown there cone shaped trees being grown there like pine cedar fir and so on and then if you go still a little bit higher up if you go still a little bit higher up then what happens is we have only grasses and flowering bushes growing in the region because of the cold temperature nothing grows there so uh, this is a little bit about the mountain forest as well and then if you see some of the uses of the trees what are the trees that are found there we have chir see yeah chir i told you chir is one of the trees that are found there it is basically used for extraction of resin and turpentine chir is basically used for the extraction of resin and turpentine then we have silver fir an example of coniferous tree silver fir it is a soft wood which is used for making pulp paper and match silver fir is an example of a coniferous tree it's a soft wood and is used for making uh, what to say match match then pulp and paper as well then we have deodar deodar it's a tree which is used for making railway slippers and it's also used for construction so i guess i've uh, i'll cover the different i've covered the different forests that are found in the uh, natural vegetation like the if you see the first one the evergreen forest then we did the second one the tropical deciduous forest or the monsoon forest then we did the third one the thorn and desert forest then we did the fourth one uh, the mangrove or the littoral forest then we did the fifth one that is the mountain forest so i'll end my uh, session here today dear students and i hope uh, you will go through the video very carefully and try to do the question answers or uh, rather i would rather want you to do the 10 years questions on this chapter as well the previous 10 years questions on this chapter as well i have told you to do the 10 years question on chapter climate i have told you to do the 10 years questions on chapter soil resources and today i will want you to do the chapter on uh, 10 years questions on the chapter natural vegetation though i have not completed this chapter i have one more session to go but then i would want you to do this uh, uh, chapters 10 years question as well so till then please uh, make sure you do your studies well and uh, make sure you have a regular uh, uh, attendance in your teach teachment class as well of uh, the last class when i had conducted only few are well present so next time uh, when i uh, call a date and give you a date i would want to see all of you present in the teachment classes so till then be very uh, good uh, be safe study well and take care of yourselves thank you so much